Uh, so welcome everyone. The title of this week's brown bag is Repairing the Impaired Brain Machinery. Um, so to start, I would like to um, make a one acknowledgement. Uh, so I'd like to acknowledge that SQUIS does its work for Canadians from the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Squamish, um, the Tsleil-Waututh and the Musqueam Nation. This acknowledgement is a reminder of the discriminatory racist and colonial practices that have had a lasting legacy and continue to create barriers for Indigenous people and communities in our city. Um, in the next few days, I encourage you all to learn a little bit more about the land we live on um, and personalize your connection to the territories on which we have settled. Um, so I'd now like to introduce our speaker for today. Um, her name is Noeen Malik. Um, so Dr. Noeen Malik is a scientist. She's active in oncology and in uh, neurodegenerative diseases research. Um, and she completed her PhD in nuclear medicine at the University of Tübingen in Germany. Um, and that was followed by a research since in Germany, in the United States and in Canada. Uh, most recently, she worked as a postdoctoral researcher at Triumph in Vancouver. Um, she's a passionate advocate for gender equality in STEM, and she's an active member of SQUIS and of WIN Canada. Um, she recently launched She Leads, which features a STEM career workshop sponsored by ISOSIM. Um, Noeen is also an activist for women's right at hashtag SWAV, which stands for Support Women Against Violence, um, at NGO CSWNY and at Amnesty International. Um, and she's also an activist for rehabilitation of children from conflict zone with the International Rescue Committee, um, the UN International Youth Council. And she's also a supporter of successful refugee integration in the West via the International Rescue Committee. Um, so without further ado, I will let Noeen um, take the floor and get started with her presentation. Okay, thanks Adele, thanks for this nice introduction. I think it was a lot of things, but um, basically I am a scientist, a research scientist in oncology and neuroimaging, and I also volunteer for different organizations. And I would like to say thanks to Christine, especially for giving me this platform to speak about my research interest. And I would also like to say thanks to Swiss membership and everyone there. Uh, be, for their support always in my event and whichever ideas I have and I want to do something. So I will be talking today about repairing the impaired brain machinery. And I think uh, maybe every one of you is aware how is the situation with the world uh, with increasing rate of the neurodegeneration diseases, especially dementia, which causes uh, more chronic situations. So if let's see what is actually brain and what is going on in brain. If you see in brain, there are so many tiny part, tiny cell particles, which are called as neurons, which are called as on and off switches for your brain. These neurons, if you think about it, they are more like batteries. And these are like the wires, which are the dendrites connecting to each other and then transmitting the signal, which is mostly the electrochemical signal. And these batteries, these need to be charged every time. and if there is the death of these batteries, then of course there is uh, more problems with memories and cognition. I will not go into more physiology. I will just show you in one or two slides, little bit basics of uh, this procedure, and then I will move towards uh, how to control it. So if you see, there are 86 billion neurons or the nerve cells in your brain. So if you know that, as I told you before, that they are more likely like a battery of your cell phone. So you know that when the, uh, uh, the battery starts dying, your cell phone is basically dead. So this is what you saw in this picture here. And on the right-hand side, you saw a neuron, which, is, which was dead actually in this condition. And this is the dead form of the neuron. And when the neurons are dead, it is called as apoptosis. And because of the apoptosis, then there are the several other processes problems that will continue to grow. For example, here is your healthy brain. You can see there is a big gray matter and the battery is fully recharged. But when it starts declining, then the first symptom that you experience is decline in cognition, which is basically the memory or understanding or uh, like 
looking around and the behavior changes for getting things and if it gets worse and then there is a spatial problems then there is the visual problems which means the perception for example or like about the movement of the things or like uh, position of the things around you or the position of people around you when it get worst then of course it will go into the mental and behavior problems and you can see from the green signal green battery which is the fully charged your brain is actually converted into this form of the brain which is there is no gray matter at all and it is all like ventricles here you see so there are no neurons all neurons are dead at this place so i would consider it like a like a red signal uh, or like a there is nothing and there is actually the death and there is no control over the body because brain is basically controlling your body yeah so this is basically what happens in the neurodegeneration diseases neurodegeneration means the degeneration of neurons slowly degradation of neurons in your brain if we go into the indices in global indices then you would see that around 42% and 10% like it's almost 52% people are suffer from dementia these are the life years that 52% actually people also survive and when there are the deaths then the deaths are a lot because of the dementia this is the stroke if you see here but the stroke also ultimately leads to dementia it's called as vascular dementia because of the blockage in the arteries or into the vessels of your brain so i will focus in this presentation how to control the stroke and also what is stroke basically and at the end i have some fun assignments or the test which we can uh, go through together so in for dementia is the first stage of cognition and around 50 according to one report in september 2020 50 million people in world were suffering from dementia and there are 10 million cases every year and most of those cases are from north america or from the countries which are like um, third world countries where like the economy is very poor and uh, it is supposed or it is expected that by mid of century there will be 152 million people who would be suffering from dementia dementia is really the earlier stage and it is very dangerous stage basically if you realize it and it can be controlled of course and before and after that also before it leads to um further problems like stroke or alzheimer disease or like multiple sclerosis or motor neuron diseases or any of these one so there are actually uh some of the fact some factors which contribute to dementia and stroke for dementia there is one bigger factor is age and genetics of course you cannot control it because genetics is basically due to the mutation in one of the proteins in your brain some people have different alleles and some people have different so it is called as apoe4 basically so you cannot control age and genetics but definitely what you can control is sleep and you can control the cognition by adopting some uh, good habits or healthy practices and in stroke uh the main reason one of the main reason is high blood pressure so you really it can be controlled by exercise by doing some cardio exercises or like by having the healthy diets but there are several other factors which are common in both for example smoking excessive smoking excessive drinking i would not call it even excessive smoking i would say just smoking is not good so cholesterol level in your body obesity diabetes and sclerosis so these are some common factors like which contribute to both like also stroke and also dementia and as i mentioned earlier that from uh, these factors some can be controlled which means some are actually in your hand like sleep smoking uh drinking excessive drinking i mean here cholesterol level in your body obesity and diabetes and if you the sleep is most important i always tell people because sleep is 60% contribution even more than 60% contribution to your cognition and dementia to loss of memory and everything and the reason is this that 
if you see what happens during the daytime when you work so much, then there are several byproducts which start forming in your brain also, just like in your body. Some byproducts also form in your brain. And these byproducts in your brain, when they pile up and accumulate here, you can see that adenosine level also increases and its concentration also increases in the extracellular cells. And it puts pressure on your brain. And when it puts pressure on your brain, you feel tired. It is called a sleep pressure and you would like to sleep then. But what many people do instead, like they take coffee. So what coffee does, it has caffeine, yeah? So it will block adenosine receptors and this pressure is then released, but these byproducts are not washed away from your brain. So coffee is what doing, it is just relaxing you a little bit, but it is not helping your brain to clear away the waste material from. So it is very important to take proper sleep, but it does not also mean that you should sleep 24 by seven. I mean, uh, you can sleep like seven to eight hours, the healthy sleep routine. Uh, in addition to different byproducts which are formed in your brain here, where my cursor is right now, there are some soluble amyloid plaques also. Now your brain actually produces some metabolites which are called as amyloid plaques. Some are soluble, some are insoluble. If you have genetic mutation, then of course they, your brain will produce insoluble plaques. But if you don't have genetic mutation and you are not sleeping enough, then these soluble plaques will also start piling up, you know, because no, usually if you have good sleep, they will be washed away from your brain every day. But if you don't sleep, they will start piling up and they will clutch the pathway for the fluid or cerebrospinal fluid to pass through the brain and to wash away everything. I can show you in next slide about it. So these soluble amyloid plaques also, when they start accumulating and they stop the blockage in brain, it can lead to dementia, very serious dementia. And less than six hours sleep actually increase, increases the risk for stroke and dementia 4.5 times more. And this is actually very important. So that's why I put it like in my first slide, the sleep as the main factor. So if you see here in this uh, gift, here it's like a tube and this water is coming, yeah? It's like a funny gift, but I just wanted to show. Consider this water as a CSF. And these are like the vessels or the limbs, yeah? And consider this Snoopy as a byproduct. So you can see that how it washes away the byproducts from your brain, yeah? But if there will be any clogging in the brain or like any clogging or resistance to the flow of this fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, then of course it cannot wash away. So here in this picture, you can see it's more scientific picture. You can see that in the awake cycle or during the, uh, when you are not sleeping, many byproducts are being formed here. And if you see that tissue perfused by CSF is very short and it's like, restricted CSF flow and metabolites are accumulating. When you're sleeping, this space increases. If you see this space, interstitial space, it increases by 60%. CSF is flowing, this, this CSF is flowing now like without any resistance and it can effectively clear the metabolites from your body. So this is how the sleep magic or the magic wand, I would call it, it works for your body. So, and I can tell one more thing here, actually. This system was not, is not very old. It is also called as garbage truck of the brain. And it was discovered just a few years back, basically, like two, three years back. So it is a very new system. It is called a glymphatic system. For glial, glee means from the glial, like neurons, and lymphatic means for the lymphatic vessels, which are draining it into your body. Okay, so you have to, to control these things. You have have to change some lifestyle habits, which you probably have or not. Maybe you should stop smoking. You should not have excessive drinking, as I said before. You should not eat junk food, like no food, like which is like high in saturated fats, I can show you in later, or no sugar material. But what you should definitely do is proper exercise, jogging, cardio, or some other sort of yoga. And also the most important thing is your annual checkup. I always insist for this because cholesterol level and sugar level are very important. 
in uh, in your body and it should be regularly checked at least annual checkup because sometimes it can go increase and if you are not going for annual checkup or six month checkup you would not know that what your body is going through so or in food habits the thumb of rule is that you have to take the food which is rich in fiber or low in sugar low in saturated fats and with moderate salt not very high or very limited intake of salt um or in another word nowadays there is another diet plan or chart uh, which has been uh, designed by many doctors and neurologists it is called as mind diet plan what is this mind diet plan this mind diet is basically it is the abbreviation of mediterranean dash intervention for neurodegeneration delay neurodegenerative delay means that delaying in cognition delaying in death of your neurons and this what is this dash this dash means dietary approaches to stop the hypertension in your body and this is what this diet plan looks like if i can move it a little up so you have to take mostly the fruits and vegetables green leafy vegetables other sort of berries you can take fish you can take but for the fish i would say you have to be careful sometimes some uh fish in some aquatic environment they are very much exposed to toxins like metals you know and if your food is rich in metals or is also rich especially with mercury it's not healthy it's also like uh, uh, acting as a acting against your neurons or activity of neurons wine you can take you know wine has actually red wine specially has uh, one chemical it is called as uh, it is the type of the still being phenol basically and it is uh, considered to be good for health of your brain but you don't have to take so much of wine i mean one glass per day or in two days is okay olive oil you can take you can replace the other oils like or you can take oil from plant sources you can take nuts you can take whole grain you can take poultry poultry is not recommended so much twice per week is okay berries you can take also twice per week so here is the complete chart you can take beans so try to take one time per day salad one time per day other vegetables three servings of whole grain one glass of wine red wine especially so most of the days you can take snack on or the nuts and every day is also like every other day you can take beans beans are also very healthy twice per week you can take poultry in poultry chicken is not recommended so don't add chicken in the poultry it's uh, because of the, some other problems so for the protein and other things you can take once per week fish so five unhealthy foods groups that you literally have to avoid are the red meats butter and stick margarine processed food or processed cheese sweets cheese pastries and fried and fast food red meat you can still take if you like like twice a month i would say or once per month it's okay but it should not be like too much in your diet and if you want to check more you can always type on google mind diet and you can get a few full plan like for every day for morning for breakfast lunch and dinner and if you follow this plan strictly you can reduce the chances to get dementia by 55% which is half which is still good okay so here is one of the visual spatial cognition test it is very important as i would come i will know after this test that uh, how good is this so you don't have to move your head or you have to move your device but you have to tell me which is reversed and which is normal letter here in this picture uh, you can answer you can type your answer in the chat box and you can write it like this row 1 for example 7 is normal or reverse so you can just write row 1 normal 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 like normal 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 or reverse 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 or normal reverse reverse whatever is the case and your time starts now you have 30 seconds to type your answers in the chat box you can select even only one row one row is okay you don't have to select all the three rows just select one row and type what each letter shows to you and i will look into the chat box then
okay, so the time is up. So let me first see what people have written. Row one, normal. Okay, here. Okay, normal reverse. Okay, one is normal, 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 normal reverse. Reverse. Okay. Who is this? Okay, yeah. And then normal, normal, reverse, and normal, reverse. Wow, it's, uh, I think some people literally got it actually. Row to normal, normal, reverse. Yeah, I think that's correct. Some people got it correctly. Uh, if you see here, okay, I need to go, I think. Uh, yeah, if you see here, row one is normal. If you rotate it like seven up, so it's normal. And if you rotate four, it will be like reversed basically. And five is also reversed. And in row two, the two is normal, five is normal and seven reversed. So if your answers match perfectly with these answers, it means that you have a good visual spatial, spatial cognition. It's healthy and it is really good. And now I will go to the next assignment. Okay. I can see here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. I need to. Okay. This is a perception test. So uh, the question is are the squares inside the blue and yellow squares, means the middle squares, of the same color? So you have to type your answer in messages and you have 10 seconds only. It's about the perception. Okay, let me see. Okay, I think everyone got this right. So it is correct, oh sorry, it is correct. The smaller scales inside the blue and yellow scales are all same color. They seem different to you, maybe orange and this seems more red to you because of the adjacent colors, which is blue and yellow. And this is called as result effect. It means that perception point of your brain is really, really healthy. And if it is not, then definitely you are going through the dissolved effect. Now I have another uh, test. It is for the memory. So you have to memorize all these three, where, which, what is where, and your time starts now. And then will be the question will come later. So you just have to memorize this picture. Okay, your time is up. So you have to tell where this cherry or this picture was in these boxes. So type the number in the chat box. Sorry. Okay, four. Okay, I think one, two people actually got it right. Three people got it right, okay. Uh, no, actually it was eight. If you go, let me, if you go back, it was on the eighth position here. So three people actually got it right. This is about your memory test. So actually 10, 15 seconds to have, this was a simple memory test or the, you can say a little bit near to medium level. And it means that uh, the memory is literally sharp. If or like, uh, it also tells about your age, age of your brain, basically. Okay, let's go to our next and last. It is about the brain intelligence test. And before I start this test, I would like to tell you that when there will be a question or like a figure or picture, you have to literally think about every point which is showing in the picture. It is about the about your analytical brain, because sometimes when you are in problems or in difficult situations, then your analytical brain comes at that point, you know, and it helps you to go out of it or to design some solutions, you know. So it will also show how quickly your brain can reach to that point. And here I will start it. So here it starts. You are trapped in a dark room. The only light is coming from candles. Now there are three doors in front of you. 
behind one is tunnel which will be the for, lead you to the outside but all behind all other two doors is a concrete wall you have that key but you have to open and try that key only once means you cannot test on each door so you how would you do that like how do you find the right door so you can it's like only few words as an answer so you can type in chat box but basically if you think all about all the elements that i also said and then you also saw in the picture i think you can get to it how you can do it so i will wait for the answer in the chat box and if you want i can repeat it for one more time but i think it's not there yeah so your time is starting now that way or is the tunnel three doors dark room you have candles in the hand behind two doors is uh, okay let me first see the because i already showed the answer i will use the candle to see if there was a wow that's the perfect answer place the candle and look for the air movement i think there are two people actually wrote the answers and both are correct actually yes you will bring the candle to near the hole of the door lock and you will see the if it is moving if there is air behind then of course that's the door so this is about your analytical brain test and i think i will end up here but i would like to i would like to show actually how csf flows through your brain this is the picture that i found and you have to see that how it is flowing and taking away all the uh waste me so we have time for questions Great. Um, thank you, Noeen, for that great presentation. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to maybe put them in the chat um, and we can ask Noelle to answer any of those. Um, so any questions about the presentation or about her research are welcome. Okay, um, I have a question for you, Noreen, actually. Um, so a little bit earlier in your presentation, you talked about um, cognition being one of the factors that affect um, the likelihood of getting dementia. Um, so you talked about how some parts of cognition could be like controlled or improved to um, prevent dementia. Could you give us some examples of how that could be done? Yeah, you can do some access. Basically, you have to... uh do some sort of like exercises they are very important and you have to have a like a healthy lifestyle but i think sleep that's what i said before in my presentation also it is very important because you don't want to there are some other factors also for example if you are getting some brain injury that is called as traumatic brain injury and then your neurons start inflaming in your brain which is called as neuroinflammation but that's something that is not in your hand yeah that is outside source and then there are something like genetic mutations that i mentioned genetic mutations not only for alzheimer but also for parkinson's for example parkinson there is one target which is called as lark2 and if there is some mutation in that uh, special enzyme then of course again you are more susceptible to develop parkinson in some stages of your life and but some the mo most important factor is basically stress sleep deprivation and unhealthy lifestyle basically unhealthy lifestyle also comes later but sleep deprivation and stress are very important also i would like to say socialize if you would like to get rid of your stress and tension you would you should try to socialize with other people and try to hang out and just make your mind relax the more your mind will be relaxed the more glymphatic system will be active in your brain to wash away all the waste material and to stop the clogage you know like the blocking for the flow of csf so it is uh, very important because the more you will not refresh your brain and the more you are already 
going through all daily tasks every time and uh, you are working so much so i i don't think that it can help you at all it will uh, these waste materials will start piling up that's also the reason you know if you for example if you start uh, if you keep working for 2 3 days continuously fourth day you will be forced your body will force you to go to sleep or to go or take some rest you know and and if you would not do it then at one point you will feel yourself that you will start forgetting small things for example oh where i put this thing where is this thing or oh, oh i had a meeting at this time so you will start forgetting many small things and also it will affect your it will also do some visual impairment like for your eyes basically you know so which can also lead to spatial re- recognition and visual recognition and so but you can always control it by having a healthy lifestyle like exercise proper socializing good food and no less junk food no stress and yeah so um so we have another question here um do you know of any resource links or do you have any suggestions for cognitive therapies for seniors yes there are actually lots of resource links and i can actually copy paste some here if you just give me one second you can always go to who which is basically world health organization of united nations and you can always see this and there are other sources also like how to prevent it there are many clinics which provide it online stanford also provides it online so oh, i am actually sending it directly to I have to send it to everyone. Okay, I was copy pasting and I was sending directly to the <laughs> Christine. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, so we had a question here about your research, actually. Um, so, in your research and your work, have you seen the connection between homeostasis elevation over long periods of time um, that relate to memory or cognition loss? Um, uh, I in my research, I have not studied this. factor but yes it does actually i have seen some review articles and some papers where they say yeah uh it is like uh, in in some cases yeah but i haven't done this because mine was basically on developing some tracers uh, for quantification of csf in brain like in human brains in alzheimer patients and in healthy patients so uh, i have not checked myself for homocysteine elevation but it definitely it also has effect yeah do you know by any chance even though you haven't worked extensively on this um do you know if there are any ways to restore those areas of the brain um that have experienced damage aside from uh b vitamins uh restoring of neurons is if you will ask me i don't think so it is you can control it but it is not easy to restore it but of course it can regenerate with healthy diets for example some nuts you know if you are taking some nuts in your daily food high fiber food if you are taking and uh, i think nuts and high fiber food is really good and low saturated fat food with low saturated fat that's also good i would not say that it will help you regenerating so fast you know but it can control it for sure i mean it's not easy to repair but of course it can but it can it, it will be like over a long period of time it will take time like months maybe or years to go back to that state but i would say if you have not crossed further than 50% in cognition then you can certainly probably there is there are some chances for regeneration slow chances of regeneration but if you have crossed that 50% level then you can only control it it's not so easy to regenerate basically okay um we have a question here as well um concerning music um do you know if music have has any connection with dementia for recovery um or in a recovery from a recovery perspective uh i don't know but basically frankly speaking it can affect your brain for example when i am like stressed out or burned out from my work so much work i have so light and slight music 
it can always help you to refresh your it's like meditation you can also do meditation meditation is also good you know and meditation is always or it always involves music and there are actually some apps and if you go to youtube there are so many people who have posted um this type of music video like very slow and soothing music you know when you are just sitting and relaxing and if you cannot go to sleep because some people also develop sleep apnea you know and if you are developing sleep apnea or insomnia for example if you are developing insomnia or sleep apnea where you want to sleep but your body is resisting to sleep or your brain is resisting to sleep and in some conditions it happens because your neurons are so active so energetic that they don't want to sleep at all but your body is so tired that it wants to sleep then there are some uh, some actually some channels on youtube also and there is actually one app which is called as i think it is called as calm and when you use that app or when you go to those channels and play one with vid- few videos you will see that your brain will start relaxing it is just like meditation more like meditation type videos but if you are suffering from insomnia and sleep apnea especially then i would say it is also better to consult doctor in addition to meditation if it is not controlled by meditation then you need to control uh, go and uh, consult some doctor because yeah it, it is important um all right uh, so we have another question regarding body work um as it relates to csf staying at a very healthy levels um especially in later decades what frequency um of lymphatic massage um craniosacral and other body work per month or per week uh would keep the flow high yeah it it will it will actually keep the flow high and it's very good to get these massages but you these must sometimes these massages are not covered by in your insurance too so you have to be very careful and uh it will charge you a lot of money but you what you can do you can do if you can learn um some sort of these type of massages one is also like a cupping thing if you know what i mean you know it's like a cupping which you can do when your muscles are stressed or something you feel stress it is little bit painful and it needs needs little bit trick and skill to do it if you are, want to do it at home but you can certainly do it and relax your body through that and lymphatic massage is very important it's also good i think once per month is good in your later decades once per month is really good to do it and in uh, like if you are f- uh, beyond 50 so i think together with lymphatic massage you literally need to control diet and sleep and exercise then i think you are good to go basically because with age also it starts declining you know so yeah So I think yeah. Yeah. Um so we don't have any more questions in the chat if anyone else has anything they'd like to ask um knowing feel free to uh keep sending those over. So I would like to know actually when I uh, put some questions at the end of my talk some tests so which test you all found little bit difficult like little bit challenging I had three questions yeah one was for perception which was for the color of the boxes one was for uh, cognition like spatial cognition which was for the reversals and normal orientation and one was for the candle one which was more like for anal- analysis okay the first one the numbers one okay i would say the color one was quite tricky for me um like the one with all the squares um and seeing that it's the same color i thought was a little bit trickier yeah it is because your when your brain perceives something it is taking everything which is around it you know it is not taking one portion like one thing but if you focus it is i think that puzzle was also more for your focus when i am talked when the question is about inner inner squares then 
your brain should actually focus only on inner scares without looking at the background colors you know but if you your brain is not so much focused and it is taking as a general picture then your brain is not only seeing to the like seeing the inner scares it is also seeing the outer color like yellow and you know the i, I think the other color was blue because it is taking all elements of the picture into one frame so that was actually very much related to the focus thing too so it's also very important when you are given some task at work or some places where you have to do some analysis or if you're working in lab and you are working on some projects when there is something about a general proposal then there should be something where it says this is the target so you need to focus on the target only leaving all elements away like uh, then of course your brain can uh, be more productive and it can give you better results you know yeah um so we have a question actually that is um a little bit specific and it's about the um lumosity website or the app um which is a brain training um application and uh, the question is just about if you've ever heard of it um if you were, would recommend did or if you have any particular professional thoughts um on the the content of the um training challenge uh i haven't personally seen that website so i cannot comment on it for sure but i can only tell you that if it is good if you feel that your brain is being challenged by taking the test because some apps they have tests for example one app that i had it is it was called as the brain age test and what it does it goes from simple to the most difficult one and what it does it puts some random numbers in the picture for example in first through two three tests there will be few numbers and as you will go to the most and then it will show you those numbers only for 5 seconds or i think 5 seconds only and the more you will go to the higher levels it will go into more complex for example now you are seeing 11 numbers 20 different numbers and they will come in diff- not in the same order symmetrical order in different orders you know so and you are getting the same time span like 5 seconds or 10 seconds to get all that picture in the brain and in the next moment you have to uh, click all the circles in the correct order for example if one was here you have to click one there 11 was there then after 10 you have to click it so it means that, that your brain has to memorize not only the spatial cog- spatial thing arrangement or the visual arrangement but you also brain has to memorize all the numbers where each number was so you can go in the sequence you know you are not clicking the dot without any sequence and that app is, is actually called as i think it is called brain age test basically and it is very good i usually sometimes play it and it's a very good game basically and it is free so you can download it too and you would also and it will at the end it will calculate your brain capacity at the end and it will tell you that um how good is it or you can do it better or not so i can actually type it here i think it's called brain age test but there are so many websites on internet and uh, so many channels even on youtube which with this 7 second riddle for example is very good channel 7 second riddles it will prepare for your analytical brain and then there is the bright side channel the it will prepare you for all sorts of brain problems or sharpen your brain memory also uh, yeah so would you recommend those um for everyone or particularly would you recommend it more for people um who maybe um have more um chances of of having dementia maybe because they have more of the um usual symptoms such as like yeah. genetics i would recommend this for everyone basically not only for people who are, because people with dementia they need sometimes special care also if it is like at the later stages uh, they cannot memorize and they cannot recognize many things and they need a helper and if there is some helper at home for them then that helper literally needs to take care of their diet and exercise they need to be taken out every day i have seen in some i think i was working as a volunteer in some old house when i was in us 
and there were some patients of dementia and Alzheimer's and because they were living in the old house so they did not all not all of them had also good health insurance to afford any nurse or the medical care and most of them also did not have so so many relatives or like frequent visitors so what they had to do they could only sit in their room or in the balcony or that's it so that's not enough for them it can only worsen their condition so it is always good for the patient with dementia that someone as a helper or as a family member or a visitor or a friend it's a too much duty i would say but they need to be taken out in the fresh air in the morning or in the later evening you know when there is less noise and it is more calm so so that they can breathe it freshly and they can get fresh it is very important for them they need really this company because they themselves will not go out yeah um great yeah so we don't i don't think we have any more questions in the chat either unless um i missed one through all of the links being sent. Um, so just flag me down if I have. Um, but yeah, um, thank you so much, Noeen, for um, your great presentation and um, all your answers to the questions. Um, and thank you. I'd like to thank all the participants as well for um, coming, for attending, and for listening. Um, and I invite you all to join us next week again for another brown bag session. Um, next week's session is titled Mapping Your Career Journey. Um, so make sure to check that out if you're interested and register. Um, and finally, there's going to be um, an event ev evaluation feedback survey that will be sent to all of you who have registered for the event. Um, and so we ask that you please fill that out, put in any comments, um, things that you like, things that you think we could improve. Um, and yeah, uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to let us know. Um, and we hope to see you again next week.